Guys, it's uh, Chris Yusin here, back from CNA. It's Mons again. I'm giving a review of uh, another one of my uh, AKs I have here. Uh, this one's a relatively new one from uh, last year. It is a uh, Arsenal um, SAM7 uh, variant. It's the uh, the newest um, one they have out in the market from back. I think it was back in August they came out, or July or August, I think it was. And I got my other um, AK case here, holder here. As well too, I'll show you what it looks like here and what's actually included with the uh, the rifle you get in the the box when it's come out of the factory. These rifles, uh, they're a new production out here, so just uh, also would be aware of that too. So it's new production, it's not surplus uh, as some of the uh, other ones are like uh, some of the some of the, um, the AKs are market like Century International Arms. Uh, they're built on import parts out there, and uh, they tend not to be uh, of a high quality out there, like some of the uh, the Yugo PAP variants and stuff like that out there. I don't recommend those at all because uh, I heard quite a few problems with them from um, people online who actually bought them and stuff like that. So let me get out of the box here. Here it is right here. We we get the condom off the top on here for it. And there you go. There's the arsenal. Uh, these ones accept the uh, 30 uh, 30 um 30 round mag right here like that. Let me show you how that locks in. These lock in pretty uh, tighter. They actually lock in tighter than my uh, uh, ars other arsenal. The uh, uh, the stamped uh, receiver arsenal too. They actually lock in quite. Uh, Quite tighter like that. There's like no virtual wobble at all in here for that, and that's what it looks like completely decked out. Uh, they include a uh, sling with it when you purchase it. Uh, you get a sling. Uh, you get a five-round magazine right here. Uh, you see it's five-round because on top of the bolt follower they have a plus five stamp right on it. Um, I think this is a new production one because uh, my other one from my other gun. It's uh, virtually identical. This one does not have number five stamped on top of it. So it's a U.S. made uh, magazine here, U.S. made body, U.S. made uh, bullet follower spring, and the floor plate on the bottom as well too. These things are relatively cheap. I really don't particularly like them, even though they're 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 okay if you're shooting at a range. It only allows you to uh, shoot a certain amount of uh, bullets, like maybe five rounds in your gun at one time. And uh, it basically locks, locks in perfect. The uh, 30 round uh, clip right here, you see right here. You see, you can show from that side right there. And you see, it has the lightning cut right here for the uh, milled receiver variants. Show the other side. The other side over here has the uh, fold side fuller stock right here. Uh, your your, uh, your stock flips for I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show it to you, but this, this thing's relatively uh, stiff right now. It takes a while to uh, loosen up on her for that. And uh, it basically locks right here onto this spring load uh, mechanism. Your, uh, your stock back here has a little loop right here. And this loop hooks into this uh, apparatus right here as well too. And that's what that does right there for that. Uh, the gun has a AK-74 type muzzle brake in the front on here. And it also includes a uh, cleaning rod. The cleaning rod is an actual two-part cleaning rod. Uh, the videos I've seen online, um, who people actually purchase this uh, same type of gun, uh, they never include the cleaning rod in the video. I don't know why, because um, you can put the cleaning rod into your gun here, except um, you can't put the whole cling rod in. You can only put uh, the, the first longer half. They have uh, two parts of the cling rod. You have your short part right here, which I have in my hand, and you have your long part that actually has the uh, the, the end where you, you can stick your um, uh, your cling uh, tool kit part right here up in top of it. So the longer part will fit perfectly good down inside your accessory uh, hole right here for that. You shouldn't have any problem at all because. Uh, uh, this cling rod only goes down to about, I'd say about right about here in your um, uh, your uh, lower hand guard, so it's not going to interfere with your receiver spring because on Arsenal's website you cannot you cannot um, but you cannot put the entire cling 
rod down inside the uh, receiver on here because it'll knock the this at or this spring mechanism out or from what they said online. So that's why all the time you see them online, they did not have the uh, cling rod um, put down inside them. Even though whenever you go to Arsenal's um, ball carrying website, uh, this variant actually has the cling rod already put down a gun, but the American version does not. So I don't know why they did that, but uh, they did it. So that's what it is. So I always liked having a cling rod arm because it gives the illusion that the uh, the barrel is uh, thicker than what uh, it normally is out there. Because every, every time I see them online, they didn't have any cling rods put on them. So it uh, actually makes it look like it, it makes it look like the barrel is thicker than what it's supposed to because. Uh, these barrels are what they call, um, I think, pencil barrels, and uh, they're not, um, they're not, um, what do I call it? They're not like the type, I think, Type 2 and Type 3 AK-47. The uh, the Type 2 and the Type 3 were the uh, Russian milled uh, AK variants. Uh, they're from the, uh, I think, early 50s to the late 50s, and uh, they had a thicker barrel for the uh, the 760 by 39 round. Uh, these type of barrels they have on these ones, uh, they're more... Uh, along the line with the AK-74 uh, round right there as opposed to the AK-47 round so you have a difference in between there and uh, because of that uh, sometimes these barrels heat up a bit more so whenever they heat up a bit more your um, uh, your point of impact might start spreading out so you might start out with maybe about one or two uh, one or two inch groupings right here then by when your, your, bar when your barrel starts heating up uh, I'd say maybe the um, the grouping might expand to maybe two to three, three to four inches, three to four, three to five. But it all depends on how cold it is outside, what type of ammunition you're shooting, and uh, stuff like that. Um, I've been shooting uh, Golden Tiger with this gun right now, and it seems to be relatively accurate. Um, I put it at the um, 100 yard, uh, 100 yard distance at the shooting range. Plus, I also put it at 50 yard. I put um, uh, a, a used milk jug container at the uh, the 50 yard. And basically got um, dead bullseye right in the middle of the can on their floor without, without even sighting the gun in. So uh, these guns, uh, supposedly they're sighted in from the factory a lot better than, than uh, what they were previously doing. They have a uh, supposed uh, revised way of uh, making sure the gun's sighted in. I think they have some kind of a um, proprietary laser type system where they line the gun's sights. So um, rather having like crooked sights on some of the other AK variants like the, the, Ar um, the Arsenal, the um, Century International Arms ones because uh, I've seen a lot of Century International Arms guns that had like crooked sights on them out of the, out of the box. But uh, most of these uh, Russian or the Bulgarian ones, uh, they're basically 99.9% uh, .9 uh, won't have that problem out of the box regardless of um, where they come from, Russia or the Bulgarian uh, factories out there. And um, that's basically what you get in your uh, whole kit right here. You get a, get a magazine, I uh, you get your clean rod here. Uh, you also get a, um, a clean kit uh, since this thing does not have a, a typical uh, a stock on the back. It has a skeleton stock. Uh, typically, uh, your clean kits, uh, like, like your typical AK-47 clean kits, I don't have one sitting around here. But it, it's a little cylinder shaped uh, thing. It has your clean brush, it has a jag, it has your um, a screwdriver, plus it has your punch to take apart your, um, your bolt, your bolt, uh, bolt, uh, bolt head in there as well too. Uh, these differences between these ones right here, uh, these ones have uh, bolts that actually have a spring mechanism inside the bolt itself on here, so it basically stops um, slam fire from ever, ever happening. Um, I don't know why I did it, but uh, my other uh, AK does not, it never had any slam fire whatsoever because uh, the, um, the firing pin is free floating, it, it uh, floats up and down perfect, and it never had a single jam up. It's not like an SKS where. Um, they have a tapered uh, bolt and your actual firing pin goes into the tapered piece and it, and it has a um, possibility of locking up. They don't have that type of thing. Uh, basically, uh, the, the bolts on these ones, uh, all it is, it, it, it shaped, it's shaped like your, your, um, your pinky basically. And it goes up through a hole and there's no uh, real tapered part where it's going to um, uh, come in contact with and possibly lock up because anytime you got uh, two pieces that are tapered together, the chances of them locking up may happen if, if you get dirt. Uh, grind, you got um, old uh, cosmoline stuck to your gun inside there as well too, but uh, that won't happen with these uh, AKs or AK-47s or the ball, uh, the ball geek circle 10 um, type of guns out there for that, so that's basically a, a neat feature to prevent uh, issues like that from happening.
Uh, this thing also has a redesigned uh, pistol grip handle. You see down here, it's more um, ambidextrous. It looks like it's more uh, better designed than the other ones I had. It actually fits in your hand better. And you also have on the other side, since I'm left-handed, I shoot left hand and um, you can see right down here, they have an ambidextrous on and off down here as well too. You push uh, forward is uh, safe, backs, uh, backs uh, full, uh, you're ready to shoot right there for that. So this uh, one mechanism right here goes across the, the frame up here and actuates your other mechanism right here. So if you're uh, right-handed, you can, you can pop it forwards like that. I'm, I'm left-handed, so I shoot left-handed, so it's a bit awkward to do that anyway, but uh, I really don't care anyway about that. So uh, you also get a uh, new sling as well, too, with your, um, what's that here? Yeah, you get a new sling, too, here. I, I, got, um, I got a couple of these slings anyway. I, I just put this one on there because it was free in the kit, so uh, that's basically uh, everything I bought this gun right here. Um, it's a forged uh, milled receiver you see right here. You got your lightning cuts right there on the sides. Uh, you can always tell the milled ones because they have that little dish dot uh, part up in the front of the uh, receiver by the front uh, trunnion part right there as well too. And the other side has the same exact uh, thing over here as well too. Uh, except this one has a cut off area for your, um, your, like I said before, your rear stock on here as well too. So uh, you, you, that just like, pushes in and out right there. Uh, your your rod will not affect that because it only goes down about, like I said before, it only goes down about a halfway into your handguard, so it's not going to interrupt uh, this mechanism down here at all, so you don't got anything to worry about with that at all, period. So, uh, shooting this gun, it seems to be relatively accurate as well, too. Uh, whenever, whenever I'm shooting it, um, it seems to be a lot more comfortable shooting for me, too. Um, since I'm left handed, I actually shot it, maybe about, I put it by maybe about 100 rides through already, 100 rides since I like, got. Uh, uh, earlier, uh, not not earlier this year. Um, what did it call uh, last year, last year when I got this thing, uh, it shoots a lot more, um, a lot a lot more accurate in other words. Because when you're shooting this thing, all the impact is going directly into your one shoulder right there for that. Uh, where other people might shoot, let me see. If you're shooting right hand, you're shooting like that right there. But that's kind of awkward for me. But I'm shooting left hand, so doesn't really matter. But. Uh, how this gun's lined up, basically, uh, uh, most uh, warp saw pack or NATO lens stocks, they sort of um, curve, uh, if you look at them, you can see the whole thing better, they curve uh, down, then they go down like this, the whole stock goes down, so whenever it's hitting your shoulder, it's actually going in and pushing down at the same time, where this one, it's going straight into your shoulder by itself, plus it has a little uh, rubber um, pad on the back here too, so that it acts as a shock absorbent uh, material as well too. Uh, that's basically what I like about that. It's 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 a, it's a lot more comfortable shooting right out of the box. That's really, that's really I, the first time I shot. I was like, wow, it's it actually feels better shooting than my other gun. And the recoil appears to be less than uh, what the um, the Arsenal SDL uh, Ishmael version as well as too. Uh, the other thing is uh, they have a, uh, a revised um, uh, recoil spring. Uh, your recoil spring actuates your um, your bolt carry down side here. And uh, rather than having the uh, the typical AKM uh, recoil spring and recoil spring holder part in there, uh, they have uh, two solid pieces. You have a tube, and it has a rod inside that tube. It actually fits down inside there as well too. So basically, what you have is here's a uh, here's here's a spring out of my one of the, my, one of my other AKs. Basically, uh, the newer one they put in these types right here. You have uh, um, I think it's, it's in a solid piece of uh, steel. Then you have a smaller tube that actually fits that piece of steel in there well too. So the smaller piece of steel slides up and down inside, or as opposed to uh, the AKMs where they had simply uh, two little pieces of um, wire in there. And whenever you uh, put your spring together, you have to clip it together up at the top where your spring goes up on top here. Like a, it's almost like a horseshoe. Or it's not a horseshoe. It's almost like a two fingers going together right there for that. So they redesigned. Uh, that specific part on these guns, and it seems to be a uh, 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 more heavy-duty um, part as well too. Uh, the upper dust cover right here, it's made of uh, thicker material as well too. That thing, uh, it feels like it's about maybe maybe about a uh, maybe less than a half uh, thicker than the, the original uh, Russian-style ones too. And as I said before, you get a free uh, sling here. You also get a um, uh, oil bottle too for like cleaning and stuff like that, but. Uh, I really didn't have any really need for ones because I got plenty of oil balls too. 
So uh, all the mags fit perfectly well in this gun here. They're nice and tight. Like I said before, this is the Bulgarian Circle 10. Basically locks up perfect there, no problem. Uh, I also got my uh, Russian one right here, the uh, Russian AK-103, which is my other type of uh, gun I got. It's the uh, SGL-21 series. Uh, that's basically what uh, the, um, the Arsenal clones, basically the same thing as that. But uh, as far as I know, they discontinued them, I think, about a year or two ago. So it's going to be very, very hard trying to find those on the market out there. This is the uh, the ribbed, uh, or um, yeah, it's, a, it's like, a, like a ribbed um, AK-103. It has the S-Mash uh, low in the bottom side as well, too. And these things basically lock nice and tight in here as well, too. I'll show you what they look like here. Locked in perfect. Uh, this one has it's a teeny bit of wobble, teeny bit, but uh, not uh, very noticeable at all. Because uh, the um, uh, what was I going to say? The um, uh, the stamp steel ones they always had a little bit of wobble in there, and you can't really do anything about it. That's why they put those dimples right down here to uh, push against the uh, upper part of the magazine to keep the magazine locked in or in locked in position. But uh, with this type of uh, receiver. It's basically almost fits like a glove in there, so when you, whenever you put them in here, let me put it back in here, locks in perfect, nice and tight, nice and tight. This is the original magazine that actually goes with uh, these types of uh, firearms because it's the the waffle pattern. It has a Circle 10 uh, logo stamped on the other side as well, too. Uh, uh, this gun has, uh, let me see here, the rear sight on here. It has D for the, uh, the, um, the um, basically mirrors on there as opposed to having an N for Russian style uh, lettering on here. So uh, it only goes up to 800 uh, mirrors on you got, you got uh, 50, 100, 200, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, basically that's, that's uh, um, about as far as it goes up there because uh, anything over 3 or 400 yards you're really pushing for the accuracy for the AK out there for that. So that's basically everything. If uh, Everything, everything about the specific gun out here, oh, I almost forgot. They also have a um, scope rail on the side over here too. I forgot to mention that. Uh, they have a scope rail or accessory rail right here too. Uh, my other one has the same type of uh, rail on here except uh, uh, except whenever you're putting uh, scope accessories on this type of right here, uh, it'd be a good idea to take your sling off first then slide it up on it because uh, I was reading online about reviews. Uh, this, this uh, swivel here can be a real bitch to be in a way for the um, receiver's uh, scope rail mounting in there too. So uh, just, just keep that in mind as well too. Uh, let me see what else somebody told me about. Uh, they said the barrels, um, the barrels on these are supposedly manufactured with, with, with uh, Steyr technology. I think that's a um, new process. It's uh, cold hammer forged uh, barrels in there plus I guess you do something with the Stryer technology to make them uh, more accurate or um, uh, beefier or something, but I don't know because uh, they really didn't get into it about that. Uh, let me see. Uh, all the hand guards, your US made, uh, the rear or the, uh, the the trigger trigger handle down here is uh, US made as well too. Uh, let me see here. I'm pretty sure that the rear the rear folding tubular stock on here is a uh, fixed stock. It's a uh, permanent or I think like, like semi-permanent, whatever you want to call it, because I don't think you can take it off because uh, they have uh, uh, rivets put in the back of the stock um, rear trunnion on here where it sticks out. It's, it's actually bulging out about an inch, inch and a half on here. Then you have your stock on there as well too after that. So. Uh, I don't think you can remove this because I heard people online say you cannot remove them out there at all. So that's basically a review of uh, this uh, specific gun. I, I really like it. I give it two thumbs up. Uh, if you're if, if you're serious, uh, seriously, I should say, if you're seriously interested in getting an AK, uh, if, if uh, you want to spend more money than, than a Wasser, or Wasser is out there. They're about maybe five, six, seven hundred bucks. I was looking online. Uh, this basically is probably the, the this basically is probably like a brand new OEM top of the line uh, AK out there. Uh, they don't um, make them any better than this out here, except for like some of the um, uh, Arsenal SGL, um, the Russian Ishmash uh, stamped ones. They're probably, in, in in my personal opinion, probably the best AK. This a a, a stamped receiver one out there currently in the market right now. Uh, this one right now being produced is probably the best one being produced right now in that uh, class of um, uh, firearms. There are better AKs out there, like the old uh, Chinese uh, um, uh, AKs, like the um, AK, um, uh, Chinese um, 
like um, Polytech ones from back in the 80s and early 90s. They were basically a clone of the Russian Type 3s out there, but uh, they're no longer being imported, so it's it's almost a mute point because their their cost is so much on her because there's a, there's a uh, very small amount in the United States anyway, so it's not practical buying one of those. There's like three, four, or five grand, but uh, this thing can be had for under 1500 bucks. I'm not gonna say how much I got it for, but it was definitely definitely below 300. So, if if you can find uh, deals out there, you can definitely find this thing for under 1,300 bucks online. Believe me, I did. That's why that's why I bought this because uh, I traded in a couple of my other guns to, to uh, buy this one right here. So, uh, you, you know, I'm trying to basically even out the cost for one of these things here. So you don't have to pay uh, full bread for one of these things. So. If anybody has any questions, comments, whatnot about this uh, specific type of gun right here, you can just give me a call here, even to my phone number, or you can leave me a message on my page here as well too, and I will try to answer any questions that you may have about this uh, specific gun, guys. I'll see you.